Hey guys, welcome back to Fire Branch Farm. I'm Amanda and today I want to talk about how to save tomato seeds. And this is the time of year you're getting tomatoes. It's time to be thinking even now about next year's crop. And the best thing you can honestly do is save your own seeds from your garden. These seeds will be producing stronger plants from year to year because they're actually going to climatize to your garden. So it's kind of like custom, creating custom plants, which is awesome. So today I'm gonna to share with you my four criteria that I use when I'm deciding which seeds to actually save. You know, these fruits have a ton of seeds in each one. So for me, each tomato variety I have, I really only need one tomato. So how do I go about choosing, you know, which plant and which actual tomato I am gonna be saving those seeds from? And stay tuned to the end because at the end, I'm actually going to show how I save those seeds. Number one is variety. So I will look at from the very beginning, how did these varieties germinate? Because all my seeds are handled in the same way. You know, I use the same soil, I water them the same, they have the same light. Did one variety underperform compared to the others or maybe a couple underperformed? And that right there is where I'm gonna start. Here's an example of a variety that I'm not super thrilled with, you know, at this point. So this is a Mr. Stripey's plant right here. Now it's actually looking the best, I think it's looked all season, it's looking the best right now. But I have had a ton of issues with some pretty severe leaf curl. You can see right there actually um probably about 50 percent of the plant looked like that for like the last month and on top of that it's had one tomato let's see there is its one and only tomato it has grown this far now again it is looking the best it has all year so maybe this is going to really come on this fall and produce and maybe i'll love the flavor but at this point from a variety standpoint, this variety is not impressing me and it is not on my list to plant for next year. Okay, let's next consider plant health. This to me is really an important foundation for your harvest. Do you want a productive garden? You need to have healthy, vigorous plants. When I'm looking at plant health, I'm looking at did this plant grow the way it was expected to grow? Did this plant struggle with things like pests? Did it struggle with disease? Four plants of the same variety. I'm gonna look at these four plants. And if one struggled more with pest or struggled more with disease, that one's just out. I'm not gonna be saving you know, seed from one that obviously underperformed compared to three others of the same variety. Third, I'm gonna look at the plant vigor. How well did this plant produce? Now, here is where, again, you need to consider your variety standards and the characteristics of that variety. You know, an heirloom is 99% of the time not going to outproduce like an F1 hybrid. So you don't wanna be comparing varieties in that sense. But again, if you have multiple plants of the same variety, which plant was the most productive. Now, is that plant also the healthiest? Did it have the best growth? Did it deal with your environment the best? Probably so, honestly. Your, your healthy plants are probably going to produce the most. Now, in cases where maybe that's just not what happened, you just need to weigh what you, you think is more important. Carrying a healthier plant forward or a more productive plant forward one that you know didn't have pest or disease, different things like that. But with heirlooms, production isn't my main focus just because that's not typically something that they are you know outstanding in. Now that's not true for all heirlooms, but just as a blanket statement, they're just not gonna be near as productive as like an F1 hybrid is. Now, fourth and last is I'm going to be looking at the tomato characteristics. So the characteristics of the actual fruit. Does it have the right color that you would expect from that variety? Uh, the right size, the right flavor. Also, the things I'm gonna look at with the actual tomato itself is did this one suffer you know, cracking 
mm, was it cat face? Does it have other imperfections? Choose the most perfect fruit you can. Because okay, so what I have here is two Bonnie Best tomatoes. Now, obviously, just looking at these, you know, wow. This is a standout right here. So, as I saw this one starting to grow, I immediately was interested and intrigued because this is a big tomato for a Bonnie Best. So, I don't know if you can tell. This is more typical of a Bonnie Best. Now, I have gotten larger ones like this in the past, so it's not out of the norm. I don't consider this, you know, an anomaly or something outside of the scope of that variety. So, here we go. Obviously, this one's looking pretty good. Also, these have come from the same plant. So as far as, you know, plant health, plant vigor, these are on the same playing field. Now, this was actually from my best looking plant. It was the healthiest, it grew amazing, it looks great, it's put on the most fruit. So it is ticking off every single criteria that we just went over, and then it produces this. So. This right here is what I'm going to save, and this will be what all my next year's Bonnie Best plants uh, come from. Is this, this is the one that, at the end of this video, I'm going to cut up and show you how to save seeds from. Also, um, what I'm looking at, I forgot to mention, is look at the top. This little one, I mean, this is a smaller tomato. Look at the cracking this one had. Now, I'm not going to hold this, you know, too harshly against it because we did have a ton of rain and the like 48 hours and I had a ton of tomatoes that cracked it's just you know it's just what happened um so but again now I have something to compare it to and look this one didn't crack these were harvested within a day of each other and I didn't have rain in between harvesting this one and this one so I can absolutely use that you know as a criteria and again this is just an outstanding tomato. Here's another good example. So this one right here, I have about 10 plants of this kind right here. And I'll put the name up on the screen because it's a kind of a, I'm not sure exactly how to pronounce it. But this plant has definitely struggled the most out of all of this variety. You can kind of see here, um, let's see. There. It's had a ton of curling leaves. They're getting brown along the edges. We've got um, actually some that are actually dying there. Now, it is still productive, okay? So it's still producing well. But if I have a choice, I'm not gonna save seeds from something like this when I have a plant that is producing just as much, but its plant health is better. So, you know, look at those things and choose Choose your best plants with the best fruit and you will reap the benefits in future years. Okay, let's go save seeds from that Bonnie Best tomato. Now, you don't wanna save seeds from F1 hybrids. Now, you will get a tomato, of course, but F1 hybrids, those genetics are not stable. So if you plant seeds that you save from those, you will get genetics characteristics from both the mother and the father plant. So you don't really know what kind of tomato you're gonna end up with. So you can't plant those seeds expecting to grow that F1 hybrid, you know, again. So always choose open pollinated heirloom varieties. Those are stabilized. You will get exactly the kind of tomato that you saved it from.
Okay, that is it for our first step in this process. Now I'm gonna let this sit like this for two to five days. Every day I'm gonna come along and I'm gonna give it a little swirl. And the whole point of this is you need that gel to uh, separate from the seeds and they're gonna ferment a little bit. So I'm gonna leave this on my counter for a few days and then we will come back and I will show you the last step.